Hello, hello, you beautiful souls. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Michelle. We talk all things life, love, spirituality, law of attraction, and all of that juicy goodness. I am here in my new location. I am on a little adventure for the week, exploring possible places to live or just to get out and see more and expand myself. I had the worst anxiety the night before my flight, and I know that that's my fear my fears, sneaky little way of trying to convince me to stay in my bubble and to not explore and to not expand. So remember your fear and your anxiety are indicators of what you should go towards. I can't even tell you the surge in my body as I was getting ready and then going to the airport. And I saw a pretty horrific thing happen on my way to the airport, which I also thought that was I called my friend and he mentioned that it was probably really symbolic of where I'm at in my life, but this was pretty a horrific thing to see. Um, and I wasn't planning on sharing this, but I feel like it's coming through. So we're just going to go, go for it. Um, but we're going to pull cards for the energy reading for the week. But so I'm getting ready to go to the airport and it's my brother's taking me. He's so sweet. And he was going to the Eagles game that day and we live close to Philly. So we were driving into Philly to go to the airport and there's a bridge called the Walt Whitman Bridge. And there wasn't a ton of traffic on this bridge. We are going towards, we're, we're kind of away from the stadium, but you can, on our way, we can see the traffic on other roads because we're going in a different direction. We're headed south of, of the stadiums. So anyway, the bridge was not crowded. There wasn't a ton of cars, but there was this one bus and it was painted green and had all the Eagles players painted on it. And it cuts my brother off. And he's kind of like, he doesn't have road rage, but he just goes like, dude, what are you doing? You know, he says it like that. And out of nowhere, it's, he slows down. And I was like, oh, it's the universe wanting you to get it hyped for the Eagles game. Cause it was a hype of it. It was a bit, it was a bus painted green with all the Eagles players. Like talk about a hype vehicle. And I was like, Dave, just chill out. Like, this is cool. It's a good sign. And then literally five seconds later, him and I both look over on the bridge and we see a car parked and there shouldn't be cars stopped on the bridge unless you got a flat tire or something. And then we look next to the car and there's an older man, probably in his fifties or sixties, sitting on the edge of the bridge, feet dangling. And it was a matter of like, 10 seconds that we saw all of this. It was super, super fast. And I said to Dave, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, there's a man, he's going to jump off the bridge. And I was like, I literally, my whole nervous system was activated. I could feel whatever was happening. And I actually, five minutes before that, I was feeling like, like I said, I had that nervousness the night before my flight, but I was traveling. So I thought it was just that, but I literally on the drive five minutes before I saw that man, I felt like I was going to throw up and I was like, what is this feeling? And it was like, my body was sensing what I was about to see. So within the 10 seconds that we are, when we see the car, we see the man and we're driving by, thank God the bus slowed us down because the bus was getting out of the right lane. Cause that's where that guy's car was. So the bus was avoiding this man. And then we see two other cars. Like as we're driving by, there was one car pulling up behind the man's car and then another car backing up on the shoulder because I think they were going to go obviously help this man. And we're like, okay, you know, we don't have to, you know, call 911 or anything. And then within like three more seconds, my brother goes, oh my God, he jumped. And I looked back and I was like, I can't even look. I don't even want to see it. And I just saw like the back of his head, just like dropping off. Oh, I could cry just even thinking about it. So here I am going to the airport witnessing this. And I'm like, what is the universe doing? Why am I seeing this? Like, I can't even stomach this right now. And it just felt like a death. It felt, it was, I just, and I don't know if he survived. I didn't even want to look at the news, um, but it's really, really cold in New Jersey and in Philly. So like the water is probably freezing. Um, but can you imagine like, what are the odds of, of our eyes driving by right at the time that he inches off. And I don't know how long he was sitting there. Um, and then just to think about what made him get to that point, but it just was like a heavy night and morning. And I was like, what's going on? Sorry, I just saw smoke outside, but it was just the, um, the heater from the house next door or the, the dryer vent, but wild, right? So I'm seeing this going, okay, 
I'm about to get on a plane and I'm sensing doom. I'm sensing death. And I'm like, I do not want this energy with me as I'm about to travel. And I just felt the heaviness of where I was living and where I live. And it's not saying that my area is always like that, but it was just a little cherry on top that like, oh, I can't believe this is happening in our world. Like, why are we going through this? Why is, why are so many people struggling? And I know why, but like, it was just a lot. So here I am, I get on my plane, I fly to where I am and I love it here. And I'll share more later where I am. I just like to kind of keep my life a little bit private first. Um, but yeah, so that was the start of my trip. <laughs> And I said a quick little prayer in the car for my brother, because I don't know if he've ever, he's ever seen anything like that before. I know I've witnessed my daughter dying and my dad dying. So I've been around death in a completely different way, but it's still watching somebody pass away or transition. I feel like my nervous system can handle that in a controlled setting. But the minute I saw that, I was like, oh my God, I wonder what my, bro my brother's body was feeling. I wonder if he's okay. So I quickly prayed for him in the car, even though he was right next to me. <laughs> we were kind of silent for the next like two minutes. Um, and then he made me look up how high the bridge was and all this stuff. We were like really interested in like the survival rate. And we were just so sad for him and his family of what made him get to that point. Um, but I also understand why people get to that point. I was not at that point. I was at a dark place in my life, but you know, we can, we can go to dark places in our mind. And when people are maybe not happy with past decisions they've made, or maybe they've, I don't know, they've just got like a diagnosis that they don't want to deal with, like maybe the, the stress of having to go through a slow, painful suffering type of energy. I don't know. I know that there's many reasons why people do it and I'm not judging it at all. I'm sending him so much love. I know everybody says suicide is selfish. But sometimes I believe some souls are meant to cross over at certain times and however it's meant to happen or however it happens is what's meant to be. So let's call in. Let's get rid of all of the heaviness. I'm going to cleanse you guys right now. Let's call in our angels, Archangel Michael, Archangel Metatron. Please open sacred space. I've already blessed my home where I'm staying. I've went around and blessed every single door and window and my bed and the couch and the table and my cards. Please open your white bubble, your white channel to allow only the highest and whitest light messages to come through. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And the owners of the Airbnb gave me permission to film in their home. I, I meant I wanted to make sure I asked. So if you are watching, thank you so much. All right, let's shake out that energy. Oh, it's 1111 where I am. <laughs> Yay! Hopefully you guys can see it. 1111. Here we go. All right, my man Mike and my man Meta, what messages do we need to hear today? We're going to start with the Muse Tarot. First one that flipped. Three of materials. Okay, this is usually about collaboration, people working together on a mission. Three of materials is three of pentacles. Kind of these colors definitely match my flowers. I bought myself fresh flowers. You guys want to see? They're so beautiful. My friend Alisa would be so proud of me. She um, does flower arrangements, but I think I did a pretty good job pulling some together. But I believe that this matches my flowers. But, and they are flowers as well, but look at the three women together, kind of, they're putting their heads together. They're coming up with a plan. So you might be feeling like your mission work has to be done with others. And I just looked at the oven timer and it's 11, 11 on that timer now, three minutes past mine. So you are collaborating with somebody else to pull something together. And if you can, I just said pull, and that's what I feel like it's intertwined. You're intertwining your lives together. Let's get more on that. And I'm just was guided to use my work your light deck. Who is coming together? What are they meant to be doing? Well, hello, starseed, what lights you up? So you're being called, I just heard, go to places that light you up, that feed your soul, that allow you to feel nourished and safe and 
ready to expand. And you're going to be finding your soul tribe when you go to these places. And this could be like a coffee shop. This could be a new city. It could be to a yoga studio, to, um, I don't know, a food store. You might be connecting with people and, and intertwining with them in, in ways that you never thought would happen. I know for me, and I always share my experiences in hopes that it might help somebody else out there, but I know for me, yesterday I was um, at a friend's house who lives where I live or where I'm staying and my throat chakra is going nuts. And his nephew was there. And I just was like, it's almost like I forgot about everybody else that was there. And I was just giving this little boy so much attention. And he was like six years old. And then um, my friend's son, I believe he'll be two, I think in March. I hope I didn't get that wrong. Two or three, maybe three. Um, and so like three and six, they can't really play together. So the little six-year-old was kind of wandering around just playing with the dog by himself. So me as the teacher in me, I just like got on the floor and was giving him piggyback rides. <laughs> I was having him read to me. I just felt like I wanted to connect with him. And that made me miss teaching. It made me miss being around kids. And yesterday I was thinking, I wonder if I could collaborate with somebody in some way where I can put myself in a setting like that to, to be with kids. And I feel guided to say this right now that if you have children or if you're around kids, I want you to really think about this. Our children have been raised in such a different way over the past however many years. And now that we have awakened, we are now seeing these patterns and cycles that we need to cut and we need to break. And one of my favorite things that I, I can't always articulate it, but I can always do it in, in person is I get down to their level. I'm, if I'm talking to a child, I get down. So I'm like eye to eye. I always do this to them. And I tell them to their face that they're amazing. I tell them all the things that I love about them, even if I first meet them. Whatever I pulled from their energy or whatever I see about their physical appearance, I tell them. This little boy, his name was Leo. And I was like, Leo, I was like, you are incredibly smart. He was doing like backflips off of the couch onto this one bean bag. <laughs> And I saw that as like a talent and, you know, other people might've seen it as him being reckless or him making a lot of noise or, but kids are messy. Kids are, um, that's his expressive nature being like, and his, his bravery and his courage being like, let me see if I can stand on the edge of that couch and backflip or front flip onto this beanbag. Like I would never do that. I think that's so brave. So I was sitting there going like, you are so courageous. You're so brave. You just jumped off that couch. I was like, but next time I always want you to ask permission before you do that. So I like got down to his level. I congratulated him on something great, but I taught him too. Like, this is how we, these are our boundaries. You know, you shouldn't just jump off of somebody's couch unless you're allowed to. And I obviously I'm not his mom and I'm not his aunt, but I was just friendly in a friendly way saying, you are amazing. Are you sure you're allowed to be doing that? <laughs> that was my way of saying it. And, um, but like so many different times yesterday, I love just connecting with his face and his, I was teaching him this one little game that we had to do a straight face. And then on three, we had to do a silly face and like, it brought out the laughter in him. And I feel like so many kids need to learn this. And I feel like somebody out there watching this, you have kids at home and you're not connecting with them. You're not looking at, looking at them in the eyes. You, or maybe you're not a parent or you're not an aunt and it has nothing to do with kids. How about just all humans? Are you looking at people in the eye and are you telling them how you feel about them? Are you speaking your truth? And are you teaching them and maybe setting boundaries with them? So speaking your truth and setting your boundaries seems to be the theme this week. And I experienced it through teaching a little boy and teaching him how magnificent he is allowing him space to ponder up an idea for us to play, allow him allowing me space to be creative. I think that's one of my things that I think I, I would love to teach all people is allowing us as humans time and space to create. We are all creators. So what are you being called to create and with who? So go to the places where you feel nourished. Maybe that's by the ocean, by a lake, in the mountains. Sometimes we have to go there to tap into that creativity. Thank you for listening to all of that. I feel like that was a really beautiful channeled message and a really um, 
a good theme to this week because if we could all really connect to each other, our kids wouldn't grow up feeling so disconnected. And then they wouldn't have to awaken and reconnect. We can just connect them now to themselves, help them see themselves, be that mirror for them and say, hey, you're really good at this, but this needs some work. Or this is why you shouldn't do this. Or this is why you should ask permission. They have to be told and we have to show them what the boundaries are. I also said to my friend, I was like, isn't it crazy that like when kids are, when kids are kids and they're like crawling on the floor and they're about to play with a toy. And then all of a sudden a parent comes along and swoops them up without them even knowing. Like how jarring is that to the human body and to the soul? Like imagine if you were in the middle, like imagine if I was in the middle of doing this card reading right now and somebody came up and picked me up by my armpit, armpits and put me in a car and took me somewhere. No warning, no like, hey, we're gonna do this. No preparation, it's just like, we're going. And I was mid playing. So that's another thing that I would like to invite all parents and people to do. When it's your time to do something, How about talking to the person first, talking to the baby, talking to the child and saying, hey, hey, bud, I'm going to pick you up and we're going to go. Okay, I'm going to pick you up. And then you literally touch their body. Hey, is it okay if I touch your body or mom's going to come and touch you like giving the I don't know. I just feel like it should be a thing that we should tell and prepare our children for what's about to happen, because imagine what that does to the nervous system. Every time you're scooped up or every time you're like nudged to not do something or you're yelled at. It's activating something. So how can we create a safe space environment where we're always communicating our needs and setting boundaries from the start? And then our kids grow up doing that innately. And then they meet other people and pass that message along. But that was a funny visual that my guides gave me of like a four or three-year-old like on the floor playing and a parent just comes up, scoops them up. It's like, it's dinner time and they don't even like tell them. So always speaking... First message from Micah Magic, beautiful of uh, the butterfly spirit. I just said beautiful spirit. Um, all right. So these new wings, you're expanding, you're collaborating, you're getting new wings. I feel like we've gotten the butterfly spirit a lot lately. And I know that's my card for January, the actual um, butterfly in my spirit animal deck. So you are going through a transformation and it might not be easy. I always call it the squeeze. Uh, I definitely thought one just flipped. I think it was, (laughs) heck yes. This is my typo card, Merkles. (laughs) My new deck is coming. I can't wait. Not new deck, but the new printed deck. Um, So miracles are on the way. When you spread your wings and you step into the unknown and you start to make decisions to enhance your life, to expand yourself, to grow, to learn, to start a new project, to create something new, that's when you start to see life bring you more miracles because it's responding to what you're telling it. You're telling it, I'm open, I'm willing to change. So then it brings you the things that you've been desiring. They need space. So for somebody in a partnership or maybe whoever you're collaborating with, maybe they need some time to digest what's going on with you because maybe they feel it in your energy. Let's see, let's ask spirit who needs space. Actually, we'll do the Angel Wisdom Tarot. Angel Wisdom Tarot. Who needs space? We're going to take this one. (laughs) All right. Somebody from your past is coming back. And this little boy is offering flowers to this little girl. She's got beautiful dark hair. So this could mean a childlike energy because you see two children here. So this could be somebody from your childhood who you dated from the past is gonna be coming back and offering you some love. And it says children, childhood, revisiting old dreams or plans, embracing your inner child, the return of people or romances from the past, romanticizing how things used to be. So I think the miracle, like when you go and spread your wings, you're gonna be collaborating with this person from your past in a new environment and right now um, there's a cute little is that a bulldog oh my god I can't tell but there's a cute little dog in there um but you can see how this is led by spirit spirit is guiding you two together 
So when this person from the past comes back and it could be maybe somebody from your past who you're supposed to collaborate with, maybe it's an old childhood girlfriend, not girlfriend, but girl as a friend, and maybe you're going to create something together. Okay, so that's who we found out needed space. Somebody from your past coming back or somebody that makes you feel like a kid. I've had three readings in the past two weeks of people that came to me and they're like, I just met somebody and they're fucking awesome. And they make me feel like a kid and they make me feel like I can be myself and I can be free and they make me want to laugh. And it's just like a sense of, ah, my nervous system is relaxed with you. Like I don't have to put on a show with you and I don't have to congratulate you and I don't have to... There's no have tos. You just be, and you're just intrigued by the other person. You like to just watch them do things around the house. You just want to watch them breathe. It's a very like interesting type of connection. Okay, let's do an animal card. The beaver card, lay a solid foundation. Number six. So six is the lover's card in the tarot. So this is also more about connection and love. And the beaver usually represents um, somebody who's willing to work really, really hard for what they want. And they put their family first. Um, they honor themselves, but they have this deep, deep, deep desire to provide and to protect and they'll work endlessly to do that and i believe that a lot of times masculine energy they sometimes grow up in toxic masculinity and they're never really taught how to provide and protect so they're very much so in the woe is me um take let me take 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 how can i get more 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 it's like they're never satisfied they keep looking for the next hit the next drug the next drink the next experience the next gambling high um I don't know. I've, I've um, coached many women through um, these relationships. And a lot of times the men are kind of like little, I don't want to say this, this sounds mean, but the men can sometimes be like little boys and they don't know. And that's not a negative thing. It's just, they weren't, they were mothered in a certain way where they felt diminished and they felt like they didn't get what they deserve. So now in their adulthood, they're like, well, I need to get, get, get. And I need to have all these experiences because they were taken from me as a kid. Um, and now we're shifting into a new paradigm where the divine masculine is the leader, the protector, the provider. So he's moving or he or she is moving out of the victimhood. They're moving into, I want to take care of my woman. I want to take care of my man. I want to see them thrive on their own, but I want to protect them. I want to make sure they're safe. And sometimes people resist the masculine, sometimes resist that because they, they don't want their responsibility because they're still a little bitter that nobody did that for them. So that's where that comes into play. And that's where the, there, there needs to be like more healing around that. And a lot of times the karmic partners that they're with, and I don't mean karmic as negative, I mean karmic as um, they're building them. They're building their self-esteem. They're showing them more things that they could love about themselves. They're teaching them how to love. They're teaching them how to provide and protect. So these karmic relationships are great because they're preparation for the higher love. And they can both be considered higher love partners. But like I say all the time, sorry, I thought it was raining. We are all trees, right? We're from the tree of life. We're all branches. I'm sorry. We're all branches on the tree of life, branches in the back corner. And on each branch, we have separating branches. And these are all the partners that we're meant to connect with in this lifetime. And this is just a message that my guides gave me. And my mentor and I have talked about it many times. And she's always told me, Michelle, don't hang on to one person. Don't stay stuck on them. It's third chakra, which is something that I've done in the past. There was a guy that I, I dated back at my, the, my first school that I taught at. And for so long, I was hung up on him. I just was like, why didn't it work out? Like, it just felt so right. He felt like the one. And looking back now, I've changed so much. I'm like, oh my gosh, there's no way he could have been the one because I didn't spiritually awaken yet. I wasn't in this mindset. We would have never meshed well now. Um, so it's interesting that this is coming out 
because maybe this is saying that you two needed some healing to do and now it's time to come back together. But working hard on that masculine providing and protecting, whether it's you, whether it's your partner who's coming back or whether it's your partner you're with, the masculines have to learn and heal this lesson and feminines, we have to learn how to live. So normally the feminine teaches the masculine how to love and how to nurture and how to be present and how to appreciate the small things and not always be searching outside of himself for external, val uh, not validation, but external experiences and highs and those dopamine hits. The feminine teaches him or her to come back down to center and to say, hey, these beads are really nice. Let's sit and appreciate that. That can bring us that sense of life is good. I don't need anything more. And then the masculine teaches the feminine how to live how to, you know, how to chase her dreams and how to do things on her own. And it's just a beautiful balance. And I've witnessed that with my sister and her partnership, her partner, he always, he pushed her to like, learn how to mo drive a motorcycle, which is so not my sister. Um, he's just expanded her in so many different ways. She's got like, she's always gardened and stuff, but she's doing a lot of stuff around the house. Maybe that she wouldn't have always done before on her own and they do it together, but he also guides her and he doesn't like tell her to go do it by herself. He's with her and supporting her through that, which I think is a huge piece too. Cause some toxic masculinity is like, well, go do it yourself. You know, I had to do it myself and that's not love and that's not nurturing. So if you find yourself in a partnership like that, really think like, do I want to choose this for myself? Or do I want a partner that's going to support me, push me, but also allow me the space to learn how to do it on my own, but be there along the way and not just say, go do it. Okay. Cause I didn't have support when I did it. So you have, to, you can't have support either. I just don't think that's right. It's not love. It's not unconditional love. All right. I'm being guided to use my mic magic deck. And I just said, I don't remember how long we've been going, but I do remember because it was 11, 11. And now it's 11.25, so it's been about 15 minutes. All right, we're gonna pick the, oh, no. Thank you. Make a plan to save money and more will come. Okay, and it's funny because I was asking about the time going, oh, I wonder if I have more time to read from one of my books. I didn't want to bring too many decks of cards because my suitcase, I didn't want to make it too heavy because the cards are heavy, the books are heavy. And I wanted to bring my journals. I wanted to bring um, at least one book to read. So of course you guys know, I love creating money. Literally, I like doing the act of it. So we're going to read a page. I was reading this on the plane too. And I found a couple new pages that I hadn't read before. And I was like, oh, I need to share these on my channel. Ooh, coming out of survival, chapter nine. I've never seen this one. Let's see what it holds for us. Quick drink. Little lemon water. If you are experiencing an ebb, if you are experiencing an ebb with money going, on, going out, sorry, let me start over. If you are experiencing an ebb with more money going out than coming in, don't panic. Don't lose confidence in yourself or think that somehow you have failed. The challenge of an ebb state is to believe in your future prosperity. Everything on earth is cyclical and all phases are temporary. For every ebb, there is a flow that will follow. If you have a short or long-term drop in your income, remember that it will be temporary and focus on what you are learning from this experience. It is a rare company that does not go through, it is a rare company that does not go through ups and downs in the flow of sales created by natural business cycles. As you reach higher and higher levels of mastery with manifesting, you will be able to draw to you what you need when you need it. And you will be less affected by these natural cycles. And I can relate to this so much because before I booked this trip, I literally was getting into the bathtub one day going, universe, please give me money to go on a trip. And then I got this huge sum of money like a couple of days later. So we, I am learning the natural cycle of, okay, I went without it for a lot of these months in, in uh, 2022, but it always showed up. I always got everything I needed. And this last one was a big one. So that's why I think because it was big, it was asking me to go big. It was asking me to take a leap of faith and the symbolism of me passing that guy on the bridge. It's like a leap, right? You're stepping into the unknown. You're, it's a death. It's a rebirth. And I feel like that was symbolic of what I'm experiencing in my life. I'm feeling like I'm being called to move somewhere. I'm being called to change my life in some way. 
and it's almost like a death and I have to like rebuild myself. Um, but it's not really rebuilding. It's just like a, a going off of everything I've already created and just expanding further. Okay, so use ebb periods to get even clearer about money in your life. Continue to magnetize and ask yourself, what is the advantage in this situation? There was always a higher reason for changes in the flow. Since you may have more free time during the cycle, use it to start doing the things you have been wanting to do. Acquire new knowledge, think, relax, explore, new adventures, or take that long-awaited vacation. <laughs> Spirit, you are so funny. You might want to look at new directions your work might take and explore new ideas that are emerging. There's always a way out of Neb. There are ideas in your mind just waiting to be explored and tried out. Pay attention to the beckoning whispers of things you love to do as well as your dreams and visions. The universe works in perfect ways. It always serves my higher good. My guides are funny. Talking about a vacation. So who out there needs to do the same thing? Do you need to go out and do you need to explore, expand your wings? When you start to do that, the miracles are, will be on the way. All right. I just had a moment where I was like, I feel so energized. I remember my last few readings. I just kind of look washed out. I look tired. I don't look like myself. And now I just feel a little bit more alive. I feel more free. I feel more invigorated. I think honestly, it's my environment that's making me feel so, I don't know what the word is for it. It's just very, very not for me anymore. And I've been saying it for a while, but my lease is up March 1st. So your girl is going to have to make a decision on the fly because it's already what? January 30th. Yeah. All right. I'm feeling good about ending that there. I don't know. Oh, you know what? We didn't do one deck. Last deck, an animal card. And I just saw on the bottom of the deck, the turtle. So that's sharing your wisdom. <laughs> two beavers, you guys. We got two beavers. Lay a solid foundation. So it's almost as if you are, maybe your person is trying to lay a solid foundation for you two, or you're teaming up together to do that together. But there's something here about the beaver card. And this is so interesting because yesterday when I was at my friend's house, his nephew, Leo, they, I think they went to a shop um, and he pulled some animal cards at the shop, a local shop, and he pulled the lion and the beaver. And I literally was telling his mom what the beaver stands for. We were like roasting marshmallows. So I also feel like this is another message, another confirmation of what this week's energy is like working hard to build a foundation. Your person needs patience. They need time or you need patience for your person to build the life that you want to share together. And they're going to be getting their new wings. And so are you. So if you have things to work on, if your partner has things to work on, it's usually like I was going to say, it's usually not just one. Both of you are a mirror. And if you are blaming them for something, stop. Because there's something inside of you that you need to do and you might not be doing it. And it's like, all right, let's time to accelerate the process. We both need to get our game together and just to expand ourselves and to push ourselves to grow and to learn. And we might have to take a leap of faith. We might have to say goodbye to the old version of ourselves. And it's a grieving process. I know there was multiple times that I was crying on the flight, just feeling like, am I never coming back to New Jersey? I don't know, which doesn't make sense. And then I come here and I sleep and I feel so good here. It's just so bizarre. So be open to change. If I'm experiencing it, you guys know that some of you guys are out there experiencing it too. So listen to the call. If you're feeling the call, I know, I know, I know it's hard to take the leap and to do it. But as somebody who's done a few of them, but gosh, it was not easy. I, I went kicking and screaming. <laughs> I took one leap of faith and then I quickly went back and wanted the safety again. And then I took another leap of faith. And now I'm just finding that it's, it's easier and easier as we go. But this one's really tough for me because if, I'm, if I were to move to another state, you guys know that my nieces and my nephews are my everything. So that would probably be the only thing that would keep me there. Um, but again, they're going to get older one day and they're going to go off and expand. And with technology, I can FaceTime. There's flights. I can fly back to them to see them. So there's always opportunities and options. Um, but we have to choose what's best for our physical 
body and our soul and our mission here. We can't always do things for other people. So, and this is all things that I'm continuing to learn. I was crying this morning on my drive. I went for a morning drive to explore the city and I was crying being like, I just don't, I don't feel like I could do it. You know, I don't feel like I could ever leave, but I have to choose myself. And, you know, it is my life and it is my experience. And I am here for another, for a mission. And I do want to do that mission. You know, I don't want to hinder myself and stay somewhere just because I'm afraid to lose love. Cause that's what it essentially is. I feel like I'm, it's going to be a loss and my little heart <laughs> doesn't want to experience any more loss in this lifetime. And I know that's inevitable and it's just part of my path. So I also got an, an astrology reading by a wonderful woman. Her name's Lynn and she works at the center where I work. And she, I walked into the room after she had read my chart and we, it was the first session together. And she just immediately started crying. And she's like, Oh, Michelle, she's like, your soul has chosen such a hard path for you. And I was like, what? <laughs> my speaker just went on when I said that and they were like she's like you're just gonna have to like she's like you've had to completely rebuild yourself and rebuild your life and it was like confirmation I was like finally somebody gets what my life has been like <laughs> like I've been doing it so on my own but not on my own but literally I built my own community I had to like change every aspect unlearn all the conditioning from my childhood and I'm a completely different person now. And she just witnessed it and saw it within by looking at my chart. And she's like, you have this, this repeating cycle pattern that you're just choosing in every lifetime, which is the wound of loss. So apparently my soul has for some reason chosen the challenge of learning how to deal with a lot of loss for multiple, multiple lifetimes. So I think that's why I've been able to handle my daughter's passing so well is because I feel like I was prepared for it and I was suited up for it. <laughs> so if some of you are out there and you're dealing with a lot of loss, you might have chosen it. You might have had this pattern, this cycle that your soul is here reincarnating over and over and over again. Maybe there's something you didn't learn in the past life. Maybe there's something that you're supposed to do in this lifetime to help our planet with the way the world is right now. So somebody who's dealt with a lot of loss, I'm speaking to you. And even somebody who hasn't yet, or maybe you just feel a lot of grief in your life and you don't understand why, you might be grieving all of the past lifetimes and all of the loss that you've experienced. So give yourself grace, allow yourself to be in it, but don't let your mind stay stuck thinking that it's always going to be this way or that you can't handle another minute in this life because you can. And sometimes when we're thinking those thoughts, we need to get out on vacation. You need to go be by the water. You need to go be around people that can remind you of your greatness and remind you how far you've come. So please don't stay stuck, stuck in a grief cycle. And even me witnessing what happened on the bridge yesterday morning, that made me wanna go back home. It made me not wanna get on an airplane, like thinking about like falling into the water. Like I was on, a pl on the plane going like, oh my God, what if the plane crashes? What if I'm in that water like that man? Like my mind, my mind just started creating all of these crazy stories. And did you see how I stuttered there? And I said, my mind twice, that's how manic I was in that moment. And I just wanted to go home, curl up in a ball and not leave my house. So I can see how people can get stuck in that grief cycle of just feeling like uh, the world is scary and I can't handle another minute. So please don't let your mind do that to you because look how invigorated and how bright and how energetic I feel now after just experiencing that crazy day yesterday and the crazy anxiety the night before, I literally felt like I couldn't even walk in the airport because I, the fear, I felt like I was going to get hurt in some way. You know, you guys know what anxiety feels like in your body and in your stomach, you feel so unstable, you feel shaky. And you're just like, what is this feeling? I literally felt like I couldn't even handle walking by myself. That's how intense it was. But that is, and I called my friend and he was like, telling me and talking to me all about the death and the rebirth cycle and expansion. He's like, Michelle, this is your soul. This is the excitement for what's on the other side of the unknown. And he's like, I'm so proud of you. He's like, you're doing it. He's like, you made it. You did it. You didn't curl up in a ball. And now you're going to be rewarded. Nature rewards you for this. So please, this is my message to all of you. 
take the leap, step into the unknown, do the things that make you want to crawl up in a ball. <laughs> Don't run away from them. Go towards them and do them. All right, lovies, I'm sending you so much love. Like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell, and I'll probably be back. Um, I'll probably film another reading or something tomorrow or maybe a manifestation video. Um, I might do two, two more things to film this week, and then I head back home later in the week. So I will see you in the next video. All right, peace out.